tonight, I ask that you open your counsel to us and release your spirit among us in the name of Jesus. By all means, glorify yourself and make for yourself a great name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please, you may be seated. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. We'll do Bible study for 25 to 30 minutes. Verse number 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they were therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem. And in all Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part. Of the earth. Every Bible scholar, everyone that is competent in the ministry of dispensing the counsel of God knows that there were 40 days between the resurrection of Jesus. Now, I wait. Don't play it. Let me get the heart of the people that I came to talk to. There were 40 days in between the time that Jesus resurrected and the time that he ascended publicly. In the which days, Jesus began a capacity building program. There was one thing that was obvious and what was obvious was the, the in, incompetence of the functionaries that would be saddled with the responsibility of extending the frontiers of the kingdom of God. So Jesus decided to dedicate those 40 days interval between his resurrection and his ascension to carry out training, capacity building, to increase the understanding of these functionaries that will be saddled with responsibility of kingdom advancement. Now, what we have in the book of Acts chapter 1 is an executive summary of that capacity building program. And what I want to attempt to achieve tonight is to peep into the notes that Jesus used for that instruction time and to glean from scriptures key points that were part and parcel of that capacity building program. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. 
I want to leave verse 1 for Sunday. Because verse 1 will take us three days if we want to do verse 1. So we'll leave it for Sunday. Sunday I will give you a clue. Then you, you study uh, the rest of the matter. The Bible began, and this is a testimony that was given by Luke, the evangelist. Luke began by making reference to a previous treatise that he wrote to Theophilus. And the previous treatise he was talking about was the book of Luke. Now, if you have time, come with me. Let's do an analysis of the book of Luke. Then we'll come back here. Because the book of Acts is built on the foundation of the previous treatise. If by any means you do not understand the meat of this previous treatise, it will be impossible for you to understand what God is orchestrating in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the manifestation of a different regime in the administration of the economy of God. Uh, there, there were previous things that God did leading up to this critical moment that would define whether or not the body of Christ will have the capacity to fulfill that global enterprise of witness that Jesus was calling her into. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. You are not here. You are not here actually. But you will soon come. So the Bible spoke about a, a previous treatise, and I don't have time for that. But we need to get that foundation before we can understand current orchestrations in the book of Acts. The Bible says that Jesus began both to do and to teach. It will surprise you that the entire content of the book of Luke, it was distilled. And what came out of that volume, in summary, was the things that Jesus began, first of all, to do, and then what? To teach. That means Jesus' teaching ministry was based on a certain doing which we need to investigate. If you are still with me, say amen. Amen. The doing that was spoken about is the preoccupation of living a life that is utterly obedient to the will of God. Jesus will make statements like, I am not capable in myself. I have not come here to be creative. What I've come to do is to find out what my father is doing and I plug in to become an administrative infrastructure to achieving that which my father is doing. It means that Jesus' work is dependent on his father's work. Jesus only works in the direction that his father is working. And Jesus will not work if his father does not work. Anytime you see Jesus doing something, it's because it has been articulated in the spirit that his father is doing something. See, in in, in modern day church, modern day Christian philosophy, because we have set schedules, even if God is not saying anything, the pastor must preach on Sunday morning, but not Jesus. Jesus. You know, I, I, maybe. <laughs> do I have liberty, Pastor? Do I have liberty to be myself? <laughs> Jesus will do nothing if his father is not at work. So the way we know Jesus' father is at work is when he begins to do something. Then we know that, okay, it is because he saw that his father was busy and he has articulated the kind of effort that his father is putting in place that is what informs his own action 
So the Bible reveals that the secret of the teaching ministry of Jesus was drawn from his preoccupation in the, in the act of obeying God. And it will interest you to know that Jesus had a spoken ministry that lasted for three and a half years. But he had an obedience ministry which was for three decades. So, 10 years of obedience to one year of preaching. Think about it. 